Hi everyone, this is Ms. Fisher, and this is a help video for the, the Replit lab called Most Freak. And you are asked to complete this method that will go through a list to see which value occurs the most often. In other words, find the mode. And if several values occur the same number of times or have the same frequency, um, you have more than one mode or no mode, you're going to return the first value that is found. And just be careful not to modify the array list. Okay, so if you take a look at the method itself, um, it is taking as a parameter and a list. And remember that an array list is a list, and it's going to return an int. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some examples and think about how to implement this method. So here we have this first list, and we need to find, again, the most frequent value, or the mode. So what I want to do is start, let's say, with I get 0. And I'm going to call this 10 um, at the very beginning, before we start iterating through the list. I want to go ahead and assign max val that first number in the list, because the precondition is that there is at least one number in the list. and um, we're going to go ahead and just uh, say max count for now is zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. And what I need to do is compare this value with every other value in the list. And then I'm going to compare the second value with every other value in the list. Okay, but I've already changed, checked the ones to the left of it. So I'm just going to check the values as I proceed to the right with the one to, with the other values that are to the right of that current value. So let's begin at the first one. I get zero. I'm going to go ahead and use a different iteration variable and set it to j gets one. So one more than the value of i. And let's compare. Is 10 equal to 9? And it is not. And so I'm going to now set j get two. Is um, 10 equal to 9? Nope. So j get three. Nope. j get four. Okay, now at this point, 10 is equal to 10. So what I'll do for my, oop, and I forgot the current value here is 10. My initial current count was 1 because we started off with that value in the list, so it occurs at least once. But once I compare it with one of the values and it's equal to the uh, current value, for example, at j get 4, it's equal to the value of i get 0. Um, I'm going to go ahead and increase it by 1. So now current count get 2. Let's continue. So at j get 5, it's not equal. j get 6. j get 7, it is equal. So now I'm going to set my current count to 3. j get 8, nope. j get 9, nope. So let's go ahead and compare the current count with a max count. It is definitely um, bigger. So I'm going to set my max count to 3, and I'm going to set my max val to, well, it didn't really change, but I'm going to go ahead and assign it to the current value, because that's the process that we'll be using throughout. So now we begin with I get 1. So now when I get 1, the current value is no longer um, 10, the current value is 9. And at that point, um, I'm going to reset my current count back to 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and set j get 2, and we're going to compare 9 with 9, and we can see that the value here is equal equal to the one at i get 1. So we're now going to set current count to 2. Then we'll compare at j get 3, j get 4, j get 5, they're equal. So now it's 3, j get 6, j get 7, j get 8, j get 9, they are equal. So now my current count is 4. At this point, I will compare to max count. 4 is bigger than 3. And so at that point, we're going to replace max val with the current val, which is 9. Then we're going to replace the max count with the current count, which is 4. So we're done with I get 1, and we're going to start with I get 2. 
and we're going to reset current value to the value that I get to, and we'll reset uh, current count to one because it occurs one time at that point. And now you can really see why we can just examine the ones to the right. Um, we're going to check the number of numbers that are, that are equal to nine. And you can see there are two other nines. So at this point, the current count would be three. And that's okay because we already checked the number of nines in the entire list when I get one. So um, we'll go through this iteration. And when we compare the current count with the max count, it's not bigger. So the max val will continue being nine. Okay, so again, we can make things a little more efficient by just checking the ones to the right. So now when I get three, J will get four and I will reset current value and current count. So here we've got, um, I get three, which is two current count, which is one. And I'm going to compare not equal, not equal, not equal, not equal, not equal. So I will compare the current count with the max count. It's still less than four. It's not greater than four. It's um, so we're not going to replace either the max val or the max count. And then I'm going to go ahead and reset. I get four. Zero, one, two, three, four. So my current value is now 10. And my current count again stays at one. And we can see that uh, current count will increment to two. Two is not bigger than four. So it's not gonna either, either of these will not be replaced. So then um, I will get nine. I'm sorry, I will get five and the value is nine. So the current value is nine. We reset this back to one. Um, and you can see that it occurs uh, one more time. So the current count will be two, which is less than four. So we will not replace those values. Once I go to seven, I can see there it's not gonna be um, incremented. So the current count is again, still less than max count. 10, even though I checked 10 and it only occurs once um, if you compare it to the ones to the right. And so it's not gonna um, replace max count and so on and so forth. So at this point at the end, um, you're gonna stop and um, what you can do is um, you're going to stop at the last value here and you're gonna look at the uh, max val, right? And that's what you're gonna return. You're going to return the max out. Okay. Now, what about if you don't have a mode? Okay. This would be an example in math class where you would have no mode. So let's go ahead and think about what would happen here. In this case, the mo the max val, we're going to set to the first number in the list. And the max count is zero. When we go through and I get zero, J get one, J get two, J get three, J get four, J get five. The current value is one, the current count is one. Um, and so we're gonna replace uh, max count with one, right? Cause current count is bigger than max count and max val will be replaced with again, the one. Now I'm gonna replace this with a two and two you can see uh, isn't equal to any other value. So the current count would be one. This is not bigger than this. And so the max val will remain one and it will remain one throughout the entire list. And so at this point, you would return one, uh, one. This one would return nine. The last one is interesting because we've got two modes, but the mode is going to be the one that occurs first in the list. Okay. So if you take a look at this four, here we set it to the max val. The max count before we iterate is one. The current value is four. The current count is one it will uh, increment to two. Two is bigger than the max count. So I'm gonna replace it with two and it will stay four. Then the max val, um, I'm sorry, the current value will be five. And it's gonna occur, this is gonna be reset to one. And then you can see it's equal to itself uh, five here. 
so it's going to be reset to 2. But 2 is not bigger than max count, so we're not going to um, replace max val. So when you use this algorithm, the most frequent number would be considered 4. It's the one that it, 4 occurs before 5. Even though they have the same frequency, 4 is the correct answer here. Okay? So with all that in mind, um, hopefully you can think about how to implement this code. Okay? So in this case here, um, we know that we're going to have to have a max val. And we're going to set it to the list.get0. Okay. And then int uh, max count, I'm going to go ahead and just initialize it to um, 1 for now. Actually, or 0. It, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, I use 0 in the example, so we can go ahead and do that. Now, um, I need to, an inner, an outer and an inner loop. So we used i, i less than list dot size i plus plus and then we're going to have um, let's use j is the convention we haven't used a nested loop for a while now notice that we always started to the right of i so i'm going to start at i plus one and again i is less than list dot size that's the last element, J++. Make sure that's a J here, okay? And then what I'm going to do is um, for each time I set um, I, let's go ahead and say uh, int current val is set to uh, list.get i, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and send int set int current count to one, because we know it's gonna occur at least once, okay? Now, recall what we talked about um, in our demonstration here. You need to compare current val, so if, current val. Now, we're going to go ahead and uh, use equal equal here because this is an int value. Um, what happens is this integer object gets unboxed and uh, converts to an int. So because this current value curve val is an int, I can go ahead and use equal equal. If you want to use dot equals, you can because when you compare it with list.getj, Okay, then um, if you use dot equals instead, dot equals, what's interesting is that this current val will be auto box and it will be converted to an integer object. So either way, if one is an int and the other is um, an object, an inter, integer object, then uh, you can use either one. But I'll go ahead and use equal equal in this case. Okay. So if curve val equal equal list I get j, what's going to happen? I'm going to increment cur count by one, okay, every time. So once I go through the um, rest of the list to the right of the value at you know list I get i, then I'm going to compare. So if remember cur count is greater than max count at that point. I'm going to have to replace the max count with the cur count. And then I also have to go back and replace max val with the cur val. Okay? Because in the end, we actually want to return the max val. So let's go ahead and run. And we can examine the output. And we can see that uh, it seems like it works. We can check it as well. And, um, you know, as long as you understand what we talked about here, then actually implementing it should make sense. Okay. And so we used um, four local variables 
These were um, before the nested loop. These are set every time you go through uh, and change the value in the outer loop, okay? And then um, you make that comparison after you go through that uh, inner loop, once you, you complete that inner loop. Okay, I hope that helped, and I will see you in class. Bye, everyone.